Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another great edition of my Guru Room Show. And for the Guru Room Show today, I got a very great guest. He is a professional wrestler, a podcaster, and his name is Lash Huffman, better known as Stevie Ray from a very famous tag team from WCW, Har Harlem Heat with his brother, Booker T. So we're going to be talking to him. And we're going to ask him a lot of questions. I am Rocco Cross. I am the host of Stutters. I am the host of the Guru Room. And my interview with Lash will be coming up very soon. This is my Guru Room. And welcome to my nightmare. Stay tuned. Okay. Um, welcome to welcome Guru. And thanks so much for taking time out of your night and being patient with me getting on and coming on the show. Cool. All right. So like the, the first thing I want to start out asking you, I mean, I, I know you get asked like a thousand questions about, about wrestling. So uh, I'll turn it around a little bit and uh, I want to. Oh, no, you can ask me, you can ask me about wrestling. <laughs> okay. You can ask me about wrestling. I just don't particularly like doing wrestling interviews, man, because well, yeah. they get so monotonous, you know, they get so monotonous, but yeah, uh, yeah, exactly. You know, I, I, I do it. It's just some of the guys, I ain't trying to, you know, hold up what you're trying to do, but some of the guys really don't know what they're doing. When and I'm not saying that's you, but I'll yeah. quickly find out, okay, if it's you. Because some of the guys don't know what they're doing. They really don't know your career. They looked it up off the uh, different things and come at you with these questions. And I'm like, okay, you're just reciting something that you – looked up and there's nothing wrong with that but you really don't know who i am or nothing like that and you're just going through the motions i hope that's not one of these but i'll know eventually you know <laughs> no it's not i wasn't i, <laughs> so, I wasn't gonna make it focused on wrestling i was just gonna ask like a few and then move move on <laughs> it's all good it's all good man it just said some of the guys do that they in the podcast and they think they're podcasting and they really just like you know wrestling fans that's trying to you know get to talk to wrestlers yeah, there's nothing wrong with that hell i was a well, young yeah, guy once yeah. so it's just it just trips me out sometimes like i'm like hey man uh what you get these questions man you know, know. because it's, it's stuff i can't even remember I mean, I, <laughs> You know, I can't remember. <laughs> hey, 19 so and so, you wrestled. I uh, did. Oh, okay. If you say so. Okay. No, I'm just kidding. Go ahead. <laughs> I, I mean, you had like thousands of of doubts. So it's it's hard to go back on a year and a date and pick the person you wrestle. I mean, you 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 work everyone from Mach to Sting to Nash to right. all. So <laughs> Yeah, you're right. It was like, I don't know, man. But, you know, <laughs> some of them I can remember. Most of them I can't. I can remember the big ones, you know, like pay-per-view stuff. Well, yeah, yeah. But if you wrestle somebody like 15 times, <laughs> I, uh, yeah. I, and, and then I start lying to the guys, man. I don't want to do that. And you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, I did, blah, blah, blah. And I don't even remember you know but i just let's get to the next thing i hope it's not that man that's all i'm saying it's not i promise <laughs> <laughs> but because like i was involved with it for a little bit like i went to wrestling school and i i who school did you go to the pretty 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 boy larry larry sharp was my was my trainer i went back okay. i i started back in like 2003 Mm -hmm. and you know i went to his school and trained 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 there for a little while then i started doing it and i did it for like about seven or eight years and then and then stopped okay. when I, saw I wasn't going anywhere but um one one of the matches i had actually sherry managed me and it was like one of her mm. like final shows she did right before she passed oh, and wow. um yeah yeah exactly and when i met sherry like at the show like she managed me for the match and she is the sweetest sweetest person mm -hmm. and i wanted to start out by asking you how you know your interactions were with her as she was your 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 manager for a good while oh sherry was the best man professional you know 
a person had been in the business for a while, way before she got with uh, my brother and I. So, you know, it was a easy, very, very easy transition. And, uh, you know, I miss her, God bless her soul, but the times we had together were, you know, great. I still remember, man, some of the best times of my life. Nice, nice. Yeah, she she was she was really awesome. She she was. Yeah. And and I was like I saw one it one year a podcast, like you're the, the one you actually do. Mm-hmm. And um you were telling a story that I I found was sounded great because um one of my all time favorite wrestlers is Randy Savage and you were mm-hmm. you were talking about a story. I I think it was when you and Booker went against Sting and Savage, mm-hmm. and um and Flair wanted Savage to drop the elbow on Booker and right. wanted Booker to kick out of the elbow. Right. Right. And I was cracking up laughing when I heard that story, and I was wondering if you could say that. <laughs> oh no, that was a that was a true story, man. I you know I really don't like to get into the real behind the scenes stuff like a lot of people do that cause that's that's really not me because culturally I grew up a dub, a, in, in, in another way than most professional wrestlers do. And culturally where I come from and the way I was raised, we don't really tattle tell about oh, yeah. certain things to the public and stuff like that. So I was really reluctant to tell some of the stories that I've told because they were super serious at the time, especially if they involved myself. Mm-hmm. You know, but I could back when I was doing my other podcast, I could take serious stuff and I could make it funny. That's the only way I could tell the story, because at that time, these weren't funny things. If you see what I'm saying, they're very, very serious things as it pertains to people's careers and and things of that nature. So. When you see like wrestling podcasts and people go, hey, Stevie, can you tell us some good stories? And uh, I'm not a good storyteller, man. <laughs> but then but then somebody can tell, can like, like my boy that I did my other podcast, somebody can get something out of me. And then I can tell it, but I can tell it in a funny way. And that story there, the night that happened, that was a very serious situation because we was kind of between a rock and a hard place looking back on it. And 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 my brother and I, we didn't know Randy Savage personally at that time. We just knew him as a wrestler. You know, years later, I got to know Randy pretty good, and I was always tight with him. And Sting, and my brother and I, and Sting, we had kind of been crossing paths since we got to WCW, so we was pretty familiar with him. Well, yeah. But the night this happened, you know, we was kind of getting some, we kind of knew we weren't in the cars. And back in those days, uh, people would fuck with you Mm -hmm. on the slide, make it look like it's somebody else. And that night when we saw what was going down and Mike Graham came in, he was the agent on that that, uh, match and gave us, the finish and everything that was going on. As we're listening to him, we're like, what the, what is this, man? <laughs> What's going on here? Because we look at Savage like an icon. Yeah. You dig? Yeah, definitely. Who, who, who fucks with him? Who? <laughs> so if you fuck with him, I know you don't care nothing about me. If you know what I'm saying? So, oh, so that's like, like that's just street talk. You know what I'm saying? If you you know in street talk, you know where I come from, so you don't like this person, you definitely don't like me. So I'm gonna always have my eye open for you. That's just the way it is, you know. So when he came in the game, that finish and how different layers it was to it, and he got to that part where okay, and book you go to the top and you come off. No, I mean, Randy, you go to the top and you come off with the elbow, which is his finishing move. I know, I know. And then he said, and book, you kick out. Oh, my God. You know, that's when I looked at my brother. And my brother looked at me. And <laughs> we kind of like that's because we're brothers. We kind of got telepathy, you know. <laughs> 
So we asking each other with no mouth moves and nothing like that. Did you just hear what I heard? Yes, I just heard what you heard. Now, how crazy is this? Okay, we won't say nothing. And then when my grand walks out the door with this real, I would say like, um, you know, wasn't a regular Mike Graham look on his face because Mike, my brother and I were really cool with Mike Graham. God rest his soul, another person we've lost. Mm -hmm. And then Randy Savage starts to go off. Soon as the door closed, but what before I was in this room, soon as the door closed, click, God damn son of a bitch, you know, <laughs> you know, me and my brother looking at each other, we actually just, I never said it before, we actually wanted to laugh. <laughs> but I didn't want to piss Randy off. You know, so I don't know, hey, why are you guys laughing at me? You know, I don't, we don't want to do that. <laughs> but that's just that me and my brother didn't take things that serious. Yeah. To the point we wanted to beat somebody up over somebody messing with it. If, if so, we would have been fighting somebody every night. You know, you know, you know, I don't want to be known in the business as people that get so pissed off you. You know what I'm saying? So we kind of held it in. And then I, I was like, hey, man, calm down, bro. But before that, Sting looked at it. As soon as the door cracked, Sting looked at everybody and go, hey, man, I just want to let everybody know I ain't got nothing to do with this. <laughs> <laughs> So he already knew what was up. You know what I'm saying? He didn't want nobody looking at him. You the odd man out of here. You <laughs> fucking with us. You fucking with macho. And then you look over here at the blonde, you know, surfer type guy. You know, a name wasn't with you. So you know, <laughs> that's true. That's a true story, man. And Steve go, hey, man, I just want everybody to know I ain't got nothing to do with this. So my name Bennett, and I ain't in it. You know, that's what he's saying, you know. Oh so my I, God. I, I, that's a true story. Randy's about to go nuts, man. He kicking and crazy. About the dude was, I, I mean, he was living. He was living. And I said, hey, brother, calm down, bro. And then I said, brother, come on, man. Calm down. He's like, that's some bitch. He's trying to fuck with my career. Blah, blah, blah. And I was like, look, man, I'll, come on. We'll just change it up. We won't do it. And he's like, what? I said, look, bro, we'll change it up. We won't do it. And he was like, man, really? Because in the business, you don't change. You know this. Exactly. You know, exactly. you don't change what an agent can put in, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying, in a finish or uh, the prequel to the finish. You don't change it because everything is leading to something else. And that's what they want. And he was like, y'all don't care. And I was like, no, nah, man, because he fucking with us, too. So what the hell? You know, I mean. It's just the fact that me and my brother had so much respect for Randy Savage. Oh, yeah. Just the honest to God truth. We had so much respect for him. We couldn't do that, man. We couldn't do it. And I know we had gotten our orders to do it, but we couldn't do it. So I said, hey, man, you come off with your, with your deal. I think we changed it to his double sledgehammer instead of his elbow. I can't even remember because I can't remember the match. Yeah. Uh, and I said, I will come in and make a save. And he was like, man, y'all, he was like, cool. Ever since that day, Macho Man was like, we was his boys. You see what I'm saying? Oh, Ever since that day. And we did the whole finishing everything, but we changed that. And we were like, what are they going to do? I mean, what are they going to do? Fire us? They're already trying to get rid of us. We already knew that. You know what I'm saying? With Rick Flair now. His <laughs> regime, his regime, if you will. And, uh, so that's what we did, man. And uh, it was a great match. We did to finish the whole thing. We do. I think somebody ran in on us. Somebody ran in, and we didn't really get a one, two, three at the end because somebody that they had heat with ran in, and me and my brother ran out. Something like that. I can't remember. But uh, yeah, that's a true story. Wow. True story. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> But boy, Ric Flair had walked in that door. Uh, yeah, he oh definitely would have, would have been attacked if oh, he would have. Oh man, when, when I say this guy was lit, bro, <laughs> the tubes. Oh my goodness, man. I mean, I can't even describe. Yeah. The dude had fire in his eyes. He was so pissed off, man. <laughs> I mean, he was hot. 
And I don't know if Flatman was fucking with him because he had just came from New York and, you know, they was putting, bringing him in, putting him, you know, giving him the push or whatever. I don't really get involved in that, yeah. but, uh, you know, Thank hey. But me and my brother's like, bro, man, look, hey, man, bro, my show's mad. Look, bro, that's the music to us, you know what I'm saying? He's, he's really pissed off. You know, we just, <laughs> we just know it from television. <laughs> he's a real guy right now. Ready to kill somebody, man. You know, well, that was kind of funny. But then we had to look up and go, oh, oh wait a minute, wait, he really mad. You know, we gotta, <laughs> you know, we gotta act for serious now. Oh yeah, yeah, man, that's he shouldn't do that. You know, <laughs> so so yeah, man. If Mach was here, man, God rest his soul, I would love to have interviewed him and talked about that now. Oh my because God, only that four, awesome. only four people until I told that story. Only four people know about that night because. It wasn't around anybody else. Yeah, exactly. Just us four. And me and my brother, we never, we never t even talked to the boys about it, you know, because that's the way we were. We never, I'm not a gossip guy, you know? So I didn't go back and say, hey man, Rock was really pissed off. We wanted to go kick Rick Flats at me, man. My mother always told me and my brother, stay out of other folks' business. And that's just the way I am. Yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> you know? <laughs> gotta take care of my own. I gotta take care of my own stuff, bro. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And and you also like in WCW, like one of the best things to happen in WCW when they start beating the WWE was the whole NWO and how Hulk Hogan goes to Hollywood Hogan, and you were part of that group and i i wanted mm -hmm. to 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 ask you at that time being part of of that group how how was the hype because the crowd was really in 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 into the, the whole the whole new new world order and how how was well, like being part of that group and that, that, all the hype that, around that's it? what that's what made it fantastic, man, because it was something a faction had never been done in professional wrestling before. Not a faction, almost like a, a hostile takeover. Yeah. You know exactly. what I'm saying? Or something like that. Or or a coup d'etat, you know what I'm saying, in governments or something like that. That had never been done before. And I think that was the real, excuse me, that was the real genesis of the whole thing, man. And I think that's what, but that's what made it so good, but you just had people behind the scenes that didn't know how to purvey it like it should have been because you had so many people, you know, running their own gimmicks within the gimmicks. So, yeah. but other than that, man, I think that's why it went over so good because it was something fresh and new that had never been done before. You've had little groups here and there mm -hmm. in professional wrestling and stuff like that, but you had never seen something where as we're going to take over this whole wrestling organization. You know what I'm saying? And either you were on this side or you was on this side, you know, that kind of stuff. So I think that's what made it great for me. And it was exciting for a while. And then it started to taper off, but just like everything else. But it was very exciting for a while. And I think that's why the fans really... Uh, but the thing to me is that they had to keep it serious. To me, one thing about it, they didn't keep it as serious as they should have kept it. Mm -hmm. But you can go back in hindsight and pick out 50,000 little <laughs> things, you know, that was wrong with it. But we shouldn't have had no, we shouldn't have had anybody in that was, we shouldn't have had pussies. You're right. I'm sorry. I'm just You're being right. honest. We shouldn't have had no pussies. <laughs> I'm serious. Because I fans, know. professional wrestling is professional wrestling, but it's just certain pussies we shouldn't have never had in the group. People like Marcus Bagwell, who's scared of him? I know you're right about that. Guy can't whoop naps out of his own ass. Who's scared of him? <laughs> so that's when you start to water down things. You know what I'm yeah. saying? You should have had nothing but, it's like gangsters. If I'm taking over your territory, okay? When you had... Al Capone and Buzz Moran and all these guys back in the 20s and 30s. You don't come on my block, baby. Or it's going, it's something going down. So when I come on your block, baby, I ain't coming, I ain't coming with no pussies. Oh, I know. 
You dig? Oh, definitely. So definitely. it should have been, it should have been nothing but, you know, people that people look at and go, well, yeah, that's the NWO. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But, uh, you know, but then they start to do these certain little factions and dish that and the other. And, you know, it became what it was. But at the end of the day, hey, man, it was fun while it lasted. Oh, definitely. Yeah. I, I, I mean, that beat the duck. Do- the WWE, so like you, and then, you guys and then were Vince, doing something right, and then Vince started doing a lot of stuff. End up, you remember that he started doing I do. and stuff. So, I so do. it, it must have been something. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just saying, I'm just saying. But it was a good time, man. Not trying to throw salt on nothing or just like that on nobody, but you know, that's just how I see stuff from my point of view. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And you know, like you. And Booker, like you, you guys tore it up in WCW, winning, winning title after title after title. And right. was there any tag tag team you wish you you had work because you know you're WCW yeah. and WWE? Yeah. And- yeah, we wanted to do a program with the Road Warriors, but for some reason the office never did it. Ah. Uh. That's my only regret in my whole wrestling career. Oh, wow. Damn. Okay. Okay. That that actually would have been crazy. That, yeah. that would have been a crazy didn't see, I wanna, While the office didn't see that, we have no idea. Me and Animal talked about it for years, man. Uh, you know, and, and you know, another another brother we've lost, God rest his soul. Yeah. Um Oh, every time we see each other, we talk about man, what we could, what kind of money we could have drew. You know what I'm saying? Oh, definitely, but, yeah. But it's just like, yeah. uh, just like anything else, man. But when you had it right there and you didn't do anything with it, then I questioned the, you know, people that were running the office at that time. Yeah, true. You're right. Yeah. <clears throat> and then. Later on in WCW, look, they they had Booker go his own way. You went your own way, and you both had singles singles careers. And one of the guys you did you 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 had a match with during during your 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 time working singles was Chris Jericho, and you know of course Jericho is one of the big wigs in AE. Dub W, w yeah. now, like, did you ever reach out to Chris or Chris reach out to you about doing like a possible stint, stunt, stint there? And like, no, oh, okay. no, I, ju- I just seen him. I seen him a couple of times when they came to town here in Houston where I lived. When I went down and talked to him. me and Chris, I've done his uh podcast mm-hmm. and uh, I've uh, I've uh, he had a concert here, um. Few years back, and I went to his concert. Me and Chris have always been cool, man, and uh, he's a good guy, man. It was uh, fun working with him. Nice, nice. <clears throat> and and I know you stay in shape. Booker stays in shape. So would would you guys? I I know you probably get asked this all the time. Like if What's they that? brought if they brought you guys back for. For one more match, one final match, like who would you want to work for that 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 final? Fra- match? Frankly, frankly, I wouldn't go back and do another match. Okay, okay. No, frankly, I wouldn't go back and do another match. As far as I'm concerned, Harlem Heat did what we did, and uh, I want the people to remember that what we yeah. did, and that's that's it. As far as I'm concerned, Harlem Heat is dead. Okay, okay. Yeah. As far as I'm concerned, Harlem Heat is dead, never to come back again. I'm not going to be like Jason on uh, Friday the 13th and shit like that, you know, uh, Michael Myers or yeah. Frankenstein, <laughs> Frankenstein or, you know, the Wolfman and all these motherfuckers that die and come back. Man, it's we're buried, we're over with, and that's it. Okay. <laughs> <You know>? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> But never say never, though. But never say never. That's true. That's true. That's what, you know, what they say. If, 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 if the zeros, if the zeros, you know, if it's enough zeros, who knows? 
You're right. You're right about that. Yeah. Yeah. That's all. That's all I can. That's all I can tell you about that. Okay. <laughs> yeah. And, um, and what do you what do you do now during during your free time? So, yeah, I know you don't wrestle anymore. So, uh, what do well, you, you do? Know, I still go out. I still go out and do conventions when I feel like it, and I still I do a lot of community work here where I live. Like I said, I podcast three. I do two two podcasts, uh, my own, and then I do one with Vince Russo. Okay. And uh, and uh, you know different things like that, and you know. So I'm I uh, putting together a documentary that I that I wrote a few years ago. I'm trying to put that together. I'm trying oh, to nice. put that laid down. And uh, those are the things I've been working on, man. So, hey, bro, just been taking it even and doing what I want to do when I want to do it. Nice, man. Nice. Yeah. And what about sports? Like, are you a big guy for sports? Like, what kind of sports you like to watch? Oh, I like all, I like all sports, man. I'm, I'm, I'm really into everything except for, you know, like soccer and tennis and shit like that and hockey. Everything else I'm into. Okay. Everything else. You know, I can watch soccer for a second but i just never been into it very much but i do respect what they do immensely and tennis you know it is what it is seeing people <laughs> get a ball back and forth and i know it takes some guts to do that and you got to be good to do it and i respect those sports but i'm yeah. every other sport that's me sweet okay okay that's me because i talk about sports on my podcast a lot nice i talk about sports like i said i've had mma fighters on my podcast I've had boxers, boxing trainers, uh, world champions also. And I've had, uh, you know, football players, basketball players, um, with obviously professional wrestling. Oh, yeah. And uh, we have great conversation. But I've also had, you know, people that are out in the community doing what they do. I've also had... Uh, you know, women on to talk about some of the social things that's going on and, mm -hmm. you know, just pop culture and things of that nature, just to free things up. Actors, you know what I'm saying? Actresses, things of that nature, it's people from the music industry. So I'm pretty broad with, I'm pretty broad with uh, my podcast. I don't do a, re a lot of wrestlers, every wrestler I know do a wrestling podcast. I don't oh, yeah. do a wrestling podcast. I'm a wrestler that does a podcast. Yeah, yeah, exactly. If that makes sense. Exactly. And yeah. I'm a I'm a person that I'm known for professional wrestling, but professional wrestling was not what I got up and ate, dreamed, and lived about on a daily basis. Wrestling to me was a got was a job, mm -hmm. a good job at that, and a job that I really loved. But I'm. I never, my focus has never been just professional. Now, even not, even back when I wrestled, when it was time to wrestle, I wrestled. When it wasn't time for me to wrestle, I didn't really think about wrestling. Oh, wow. Okay. You know, I never really got, I got, I still, everybody I still work with, I'm still friends with and stuff like that when yeah. I see them, but I've never been, they were never my friends that I talk to on a daily basis. Now, my brother, on the other hand, he's more like that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, he's yeah, more like exactly. wrestling is his whole life. And he let, you know, other wrestlers stay at his crib and shit mm -hmm. like that. I've never, I've never been like that. Well, there's I mean, only a few, there's only a few wrestlers I know that I was cool enough with to let them stay at my home. Well, yeah, definitely. But well, a lot I, of people are like that because that's why they, you know, they, they're into stuff like that. But I've just never been. I got my own friends. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, you you have your personal friends and your work friends. That's you know, that's how that's how it is. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Because you so you know that's that's why I'm saying my podcast. People always ask me, "Hey, man, won't you have this person on or this person on?" But okay, I might try to get them on. But I like to talk about other stuff right. other than I'm from the wrestling world. So when I'm talking about something. I already know it. <laughs> you know, it's, it's like doing a test in school that you already stole the answers. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You already stole the answers. So I'm going yeah, I'm to I'm gonna get this right. But, uh, <laughs> but I love talking to wrestlers about things, you know, that we can kind of 
you know what I'm saying, have conversation yeah. about this yeah, fun, exactly. funny and stuff like that. And, and the audience gets a kick out of that. So it's not a conventional wrestling. When I interview a wrestler, it's like two guys that just shooting the shit. Mm-hmm. If you know what I'm saying, we sitting in yeah. a bar and we just shooting the shit. Yeah, that, it's not an inter- it's not a it's not an in- interview. It's a conversation. Yeah. So, people seem to like that. So I kind of like bringing that to the table. And uh, when I interview people from other sports like drag racing, I've had a few drag racers. Oh wow! On and uh, champions, and I you know, and, and I make references to what they do you know like you lucky get my mother had a a nine pound kid that grew up to be six foot five and 290 pounds because if i had a took up drag race and i'm telling you right now you would have never got it to see i would have took your ride from you you know <laughs> you're lucky i can't fit in the ride right now you know stuff like and they seem to like you know what I'm saying? so just we go through that kind of banter you know you lucky god made me too big you know well, I would have been the baddest drag race out there, you know, stuff like that. <laughs> living through oh, them, man. like a kid living through them. So they get a, and they get a kick out of it. People be, you know, whether the actor, MMA, you know, I've had Bach, I had Larry Holmes on. And oh, nice. I'm like, yeah. I'm like, I'm like, Larry, you you lucky. I didn't I didn't take up boxing, Larry. I'm bigger than you, Larry. You know what I'm saying? I'm stronger than you, Larry, you know? <laughs> <laughs> and they just get a kick out of it. You know what I'm saying? So I like doing that kind of stuff, you know? Nice. <laughs> <laughs> and Larry Hope, you know, he's just laughing. And they just laugh, you know, he's like, because you know, he probably would have beat my brains in or something like that. You know? but, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but it's something to think about, like a kid. You know, you just think about what if I had to box you, Larry? Right. You know? Right. Larry, 290, baby, 6'5. Fast. I can move, Larry. You know. <laughs> this guy been boxing since he was seven years old. What would I yeah, do? Yeah, you know? Exactly. exactly. <laughs> <laughs> he laughed at me and killed me at the same time. <laughs> you know. <laughs> <laughs> but it's good. But it's good to have those conversations with people that I admire what they do. Mm-hmm. That's and that's and some of those so many of those guys came up watching what I did. So it's easy to get interviews with them. Oh, yeah, of course. Of course. Yeah. So so that's something that I really like doing. Nice. Nice. I yeah. mean, I know exactly what you're talking about when, you know, you, you said that wrestling was a job and when you leave, I mean, especially me, when I leave my job, I don't want to talk about it. When I leave my job, yeah. I just want to talk about other things. I don't want to think about it until, yeah. until I go back the following day. Right. Exactly. So, yeah, I totally get that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, um, and, so. and what kind What's of that? like, Oh, so what kind of songs do you like listening to? Like, what what, what kind of, of 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 music is on your your playlist? Oh man, I got music from the sixties, seventies, eighties, nineties, two thousand, all the way up to today on my playlist. All right, there you go. From because I'm the kind of person that's always been. I like what I I like what I hear. Yeah, if I hear something and I like it, I will buy it. Now I don't care who sings it. You know what I'm saying? I don't care who sings it. I don't care what who the artist is. If I like it, I'll buy it. You know? Or nowadays, I'll download it. Well, yeah, so, and uh, everything is streaming and downloading now. So <laughs> but that's what's in that's what's in my playlist, man. From oh my God. From James Brown to the Rolling Stones. Oh my God, man. You, you I've got a litany of people that I have to put my music in categories. Wow. Because I, you know, yeah. But I put my music in set categories and you might hear anything from any era. Yeah. You know, in the last 50 some odd years, you might hear any, you might, if you listen to my playlist, it'll go from one extreme to the next. So that's the kind, I don't listen to a certain kind of music. I like good music. Mm-hmm. 
if that makes sense. Oh no, yeah, it definitely does. But, yeah. but like if you if you were at at the gym, like you need a certain kind of of songs playing when you're 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 doing like your weight training or or running or whatever. Like what kind of music do you like when you're like, that's it. lifting weights? Oh, it's so that's it's just, it. You know what I'm okay. saying? And and yeah, that's it. A lot of times I listen to whatever, you know, one category is like just popular music. One category yeah. is 80s rock music. Okay. Stuff like that. And it's usually one of those. Oh, wow. Nice. It's nice. Yeah. Awesome. yeah, it's usually one of those. And that I'm I, listening I, to in the gym. <laughs> I don't know if you've, you've ever done this, but if you were at, karaoke would you have a go-to song i've only did karaoke once in my life and i was too drunk to remember it <laughs> and that was 1993 1993 in japan i think it was in osaka japan oh sweet and um i i, I remember doing karaoke because i think that might be where karaoke started because he hadn't even got to the states yet and you could go in clubs and do karaoke back then in Japan, you know? Nice. And I can't, I, I, I don't remember what I was trying to sing or attempting to sing. I was drunk and I'm not a drinker, but I didn't want to upset the host of the tour, the Japanese guys. And yeah. Oh man, I couldn't hit a note worth of crap. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I was I wasn't trying to though, but I was, too drunk, man. I mean, I hate it. I still remember that at night. I can't remember <laughs> wrestling matches, but I can remember that. Is that crazy? You know, <laughs> that's funny. Yeah, that's true. It's a true story, man. I'm like, oh my god, what song will I go to in a karaoke deal? And I don't know, man. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I'm kind of shell shocked that do karaoke after that night, man. I was shell shocked. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness yeah, never forget it me my brother manny fernandez oh yeah A A alex parto uh vito big vito nice. oh yeah yeah man never forget it i think that was my last karaoke event first and last <laughs> Yeah, the first and last, and you never go first, back. First and last, <laughs> all in one night. <laughs> <laughs> no, bro. <laughs> well, what song I would go to, I have no idea. I was singing the other night on my podcast, and people were like, hey, Stevie, you can really sing. I'm like, yeah, man, I was. I used to love singing when I was in like junior high, man. And, oh, okay. But, but I got kicked out of the choir. I got kicked out of the choir, so... That was the end of my singing career. Oh, damn. Yeah. I can't remember why I got kicked out. I was, guess I was acting up or something like that. <laughs> but, but yeah, yeah, junior high, I got kicked out of the choir, man. So, yeah, it is what it is. Look at me, look at me now. Yeah, hey, you know, that was, that was probably a, a good thing you got kicked out of choir because yeah. went on know. to make money with wrestling. Yeah, but, uh, <laughs> Yeah, but it's not like I wanted a career in it or nothing like that, but I did enjoy it, you know, so. Yeah, definitely. So, so on, the, on my podcast every now and then, I'll, uh, I'll uh, start, if, if I'm doing a, if something comes up, a subject like that, because sometimes I do my podcast where I just, where I just talk to the fans. Mm -hmm. And you can see my stuff behind me. I'm in my area right now where I do my podcast. Okay. And, um. Uh, and if if the subject comes up, you know, I'll start singing a song, you know, see if anybody remember it, you know. And it's funny with the car, hey Steve, you can you can hold a note. I'm like, yeah, man, your boy can do a lot of stuff, man. You just don't know. <laughs> it's fun. But we have fun with it though. <laughs> nice. <laughs> And I always ask guests when I have them on because I, I I think I was telling you like I, I'm I'm a big horror fan, and I I always ask like what are some horror movies you like to watch if you're a fan of horror? Well, I just gave you a few that I'm not going to be, and it pertains to horror movies. I gave you those. 
<laughs> but I'm going to tell you something, man. <laughs> when it comes to horror movies, I'm a big, big proponent of horror movies from the 50s and the oh, 40s. Okay. I like the old horror movies. Like when I was a kid, they came on. And then as time progressed, you didn't get to see them anymore. Mm -hmm. But now I can pull a lot of them back up. You know, like Frankenstein meets the Wolfman, you know, yes. stuff like that. Yes. You know, stuff like with Lon Chaney Jr. and you know, <sighs> Boris, Kar Boris Karloff and all these guys. You know, I uh, I love that stuff, man. I love it. And I even go back sometimes and look those movies back up and watch them, man. You know, I still do to this day when I get a chance because, hey, man, that was a big part of my childhood. Exactly. And, and back in those days, you know, you only had one television in the house and, you know, 50,000 commercials came on and yes. somebody might want to watch. Somebody might want to watch something else and this, that, and the other. And you never really got the chance to really, once you get more mature, you can figure out the dialogue and things of that nature. Mm -hmm. That's what I really like when I got older, I started to do is figure, listen to the dialogue to see where this movie is taking me and stuff like that and try to figure out what's going on. As a kid, you don't really care about that. You just were ready for somebody to get eaten or killed <laughs> or thrown off a cliff or Whatever, you know, burn up, shot, you know, <laughs> that's, all you, that's all you kind of came with them about. But, you know, as you got older, you kind of figured, you're trying to, you kind of get into the movies, the movie business and who wrote the movie and why they wrote it or, you know, the screenplays and stuff like that, because a lot of these movies come from books and how people can take stories from books and then make them into a screenplay. And, you know, you only got an hour and a half, hour and 20 minutes to get the dialogue right to make well, it yeah. make sense. And who knows? who knows how much they had to edit out and this, that, and the other, still make this movie make sense and things like that. And I really got into doing stuff like that as, 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 a, young, as a young man. And I still do it to this day. And uh, so that's why I like movies from the era of No Return, the drive-in era, man, you know. Uh, and, yeah, the drive-in uh, movies, yeah. Uh, and, and things of that nature. So it's like, hey, Hey man, uh, the wolf guy's coming, man, or the Dracula, man. He's behind the door, man. Don't nobody see him? You know, that he's hiding, man. What's wrong with this lady, man? She don't see the duty right there, you know? Then they make that scream, oh, you know? <laughs> yeah. That's your ass, baby. Should you just, you should have looked back there, you know? I'm like, man, you know, that kind of stuff, man. Oh, I love it. Uh, just sitting there thinking about it gives me goosebumps. But then, yeah, I don't say. But one movie I liked in modern times that I still, that I thought, when I saw it, it brought back that feeling of when I was a kid. And I went to the movies, you know, the, 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 the movie to see this movie. And I think it was 1982 or 1983. And it was a movie, The Thing. And John oh, Carpenter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah J John Carpenter redid The Thing. Yes. The movie, the movie version from the 50s. Yes. And uh, he made it, even though it was a modern day movie. But it had that 1950s type, you don't know who's who. Exactly. You don't know where it is. All of a sudden, somebody's not around. Where is he? Type feel to it. You know what I'm saying? And that movie, man, I love that movie. Kurt Russell, Kurt Russell was one of my favorite actors of all time. And uh, and Kurt was the lead in that, man. And uh, great movie, man. Great movie. Great dialogue, too. Great dialogue. Some of the it's, things it's that definitely a classic. Oh man, man, love that movie, man. So that one brought back my childhood, and I'll be forever grateful to John Carpenter for yes. doing that, man. Because it, because you know, I've seen a lot of John Carpenter movies, but this one, you know, if you know the original thing, the movie took little tidbits, the plot. But man, made it much, much better. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, he didn't put no love affair in it with some <laughs> chick. You know, every movie back in the fifties gotta have some nice looking chick that's in the way and shit like that. He didn't do that. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. oh. now, he he just gave yeah. you a good old old fashioned horror horror thriller. No women in the movie. I loved it. No women. Some woman getting in the damn way. 
you know what I'm saying, uh, having a love affair on the side. And next thing you know, your guy you're in love with, it's the thing. You know, that's, I'm glad he didn't do that. You know, like the original thing, you know, the guy, the, the main character, you know, he had a little, I don't know, a little affair with the chick that was working at the base. Ah, man, well, that was good for back then. But I'm yeah. glad he didn't bring it to the 80s, man, you know. Cause they all in the, in the fifty, you always gotta have a nice looking chick in there. You know what I'm well, saying? Yeah, of course. So you can you can have that scary face, you know, on the billboard, you know, the the the, the flyers that they make, and then have the monster over here. You know, that make everybody go see the movie. You know, <laughs> I'm like, damn, bro. Did, do they got any regular looking chicks that <laughs> can get ate up, or beat up, or thrown out the window? What about the regular looking chick? You know, it's always gotta be some beauty. You know, what I'm saying? I know you're right about <laughs> that. Yeah. What, what's, what's with that, dog? You know what I'm saying? I, I mean, I know women like this going to be standing on council by herself any damn way. <laughs> what I need to be standing council for the way I look. You know what I'm saying? Right, <laughs> right. Yeah, man, go get, take your ass back to the city, man, where you belong. <laughs> you know, this is Frankenstein out there. Wolf man, all kind of stuff, man. Always, man. But I loved it, man. I'm talking about it now, but hey, I loved it, man. So yeah, that's about the best. That's about the best I can answer that one, man. Okay, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> I always got the beautiful buxoms. I know exactly. That's how, that's how it always was. <laughs> Ain't got nothing better to do to be out here in the middle of the woods with fifty guys. You know, you got nothing better to do. Damn. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> <laughs> and um, with. Halloween <laughs> season coming up. Do you ever go to any of the 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 haunts, like the haunted houses and the hay rides and all that? I actually no, man. I've never been into that kind of stuff. Okay. Uh, no, never have. Uh, I swear to God, never have because they got a lot of them here when the Halloween There's stuff comes up, this, that, and the other. But I just never been in. Even when I was a kid, I never cared about that kind of stuff. Oh wow! I like I like the movies because the thing was in the movies, I was always trying to figure stuff out. I was never afraid of stuff like that. I was always trying to figure. My mind just races, man. So I think I might have, as a kid, I might have went through a few of them at the carnival. You know, when you're a kid, you just yeah, you know, somebody, you know, you getting on you and your friends and stuff like that. But no, man, I never been into, never, never really cared about Halloween very much, man. Oh, okay. okay. I don't know why. And and like, what about like food? What what is your favorite like cheap food or junk junk food? Get me some fried chicken or hamburger. That's about um, it. Okay. And, you know, I try to stay away from McDonald's because even, yeah. McDonald's, even though McDonald's probably sell more food than all those other places put together, they got the worst hamburgers on earth. But when I go to McDonald's, I always get chicken nuggets. I love the chicken nuggets, yes. Yeah, because yeah. everybody else's chicken nuggets taste like crap. I know, but I know, Mc you're right. But McDonald's chicken nuggets taste good, so that's what yeah. I usually get. Yeah, I'm... I'm the same way. Every time I go there, I, I mean, I I go overboard. I always get a twenty piece when I should be getting Me a ten. Too. But... <laughs> Me too. And brother, I can eat them quick. I know he said. I can, I can. I can eat them quick, man. But yeah. So that's, yeah, that's pretty me. much. That's that's my thing, man. When I go out, I either go to uh, get some chicken nuggets, or I either go to. Uh, my Kentucky or something like that, mm -hmm. get some chicken or something like that. That's nice. my fast food. But I, I really eat. I cook a lot. I eat a lot of my, you know, stuff that I like, stuff like that. Yeah. So that's basically what I do. But on weekends, I like to step out every now and then. If not, that's some Chinese food. Oh, okay, nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Awesome. And uh, <clears throat> is there an, anything you want to plug or uh, like? Tell tell everyone your uh, shows and stuff. Hey man, everybody can reach me. Go to Stevie Ray TV on YouTube. Go to Stevie Ray TV on YouTube, and you can see the world's most dangerous podcast. You can see the billboard behind me right there. Straight shooting with Stevie Ray. And uh, hey man, become a subscriber, become a member. Hey man, let's make this thing happen. Stevie Ray TV, Twitch, Stevie Ray TV, YouTube. Straight shooting with Stevie Ray. 
let's have some fun. I even have a call in number when I go live. So wow. it's all good, bro. Wow, you definitely have all of your ducks in order, right? Like you got you got the Twitch, you got YouTube, you got Instagram, everything flows. Yeah. <laughs> TV Ray TV, all of it. Awesome. And you mentioned Twitch. Like, are do you do you also do video gaming too? No. I okay. Don't. <laughs> no, I don't. I just use Twitch for the plat plat platform. Okay, sweet, sweet. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank thank you so much for taking time out and coming on the show. It was no really problem, fun talking to you. Like you're really funny. And <laughs> thanks, thanks again for doing this. No problem, bro. No problem. <laughs> All right, buddy. Um, definitely have a good night and good rest of the week. Okay, you too, man. Thanks. All right.